one of the most misunderstood topics in basic gynecology is virgin and flexion of the uterus. Many students think that they are synonymous. For them, virgin is the angle between the uterus and vagina. This is the most erroneous thing to say. Students and my learned obstetricians and gynecologists, let me point out that the body of the uterus does not sustain any angle with the vagina. The fact of the anatomy is that body of the uterus subtends an angle with the cervix and the cervix in turn subtends an angle with the vagina. Most of you have this wrong basic funda because you think that uterus and cervix are one organ. This is absolutely wrong. The uterus and cervix are individual organs with their respective anatomy, physiology and even pathology. Carcinoma of the cervix is not the same as carcinoma of endometrium. My name is Dr. Ajit Virkud. I am a professor of obstetrics and gynecology from Mumbai, India. My subspecialty is urogynecology and pelvic reconstructive surgery. Obstetrics and gynecology is my profession, but teaching is my passion. My area of core competence is teaching basics of obstetrics and gynecology. Hello, citizens of the interweb. Today, I am going to discuss a very basic topic in gynecology that is what is normal position of the uterus, cervix and vagina. Unfortunately, most students of obstetrics and gynecology are not taught this or if they are taught, they are taught wrong concepts. So I am going to once for all clear the concepts of what is version and flexion and its applied anatomy. So pay close attention. My definition of virgin and flexion is the relationship of the uterus, cervix and vagina with respect to each other and in relation to the adjacent organs like bladder and rectum. This is much like the definition of attitude of the fetus in obstetrics. I will first start with a quotation. Voltaire has said that uterus has one typical position but many normal positions. The most fundamental thing to remember is that uterus is a mobile organ. It has many different normal positions. Physiological functions of the body require that uterus cannot be a fixed organ. As the bladder becomes full, the body of the uterus will have to be pushed posteriorly towards the rectum and when the bladder is emptied after passing urine, the uterus has to be brought back to its anterior position. This is aptly done by the round ligaments. Similarly, when the woman becomes pregnant over a period of 9 months, the normal sized uterus enlarges up to the ziv sternum. This cannot happen if the uterus is a fixed organ. Virgin is defined as the angle between the long axis of the cervix and the long axis of the vagina. On the other hand, the angle between the long axis of the cervix and the long axis of the body of the uterus is defined as flexion. Based on these definitions, the different positions of the cervix and body of the uterus in relationship to each other and vagina are There are three flexion positions Anti-flexion, mid-pose position and retroflexion And there are three virgin positions that is anti-virgin, mid-pose and retroversion. I will illustrate these with diagrams. First, I will talk about the normal antiverted antiflex 
position of the uterus. This diagram illustrates the so-called normal position of the genital tract. Typically, the uterus and the cervix lie in the antiverted and antiflex position. When one does a biomanual examination, if the cervix is pointed downwards and backwards, that is, the external os is towards the sacrum, it is referred to as the antiverted position, and if the body of the uterus is felt towards the bladder, it is called as antiflexion. The angle of version is normally 90 degrees and the flexion angle is approximately 120 to 150 degrees. Alternatively, or more commonly, the uterus and cervix can also be in a retroverted and retroflex position. When one does a biomanual examination, if the cervix is pointed downwards and forwards, that is, the external os is towards the bladder, it is referred to as retroverted position. And if the body of the uterus is felt towards the rectum, it is called as retroflexion as shown in this diagram. In the past, this was considered as an abnormal position and many different surgical operations were described to correct this retroverted position. In modern gynecology and obstetrics, retroverted uterus and cervix are considered as a normal variant of the position of the uterus. Contrary to the former belief, retroversion does not cause infertility. This diagram shows that the cervix is pointed downwards and backwards, therefore it is antiverted, but the body of the uterus is towards the rectum, that is, it is a retroflexed uterus. This is an uncommon combination of the position of the uterus. This diagram shows the difference between antiflexion and retroflexion. When the body of the uterus is felt on bimanual examination towards the bladder, see dotted lines, it is called as antiflexion and when it is felt towards the rectum, it is called retroflexed uterus. The uterus is antiflexed in about 80% of normal women and retroflexed in about 20% of women. Please note that the cervix is pointed downwards and backwards that is, it is in antiverted position in both these flexion positions of the uterus. One of the rarest positions felt on biomanual examination is the mid pose position where the body of the uterus, cervix and vagina form more or less a straight axis as seen here in this diagram. This diagram illustrates mid pose cervix and a retroflexed uterus. On bimanual examination, if the cervix is only pointing downwards and the body of the uterus is towards the rectum, it is called as mid post cervix with retroflexed uterus. This is also an uncommon position. This diagram from my book Modern Gynecology summarizes the different positions of the uterus and cervix. A refers to antiverted and antiflex position of the uterus and cervix. B refers to the midpost position and C refers to the retroverted retroflex position of the uterus, cervix and vagina. The retroverted uterus can be congenital or acquired. 40 to 70% of normal healthy women have a retroverted and retroflexed mobile uterus which is asymptomatic. This is called congenital retroverted uterus. Remember, a congenital retroverted uterus does not cause infertility contrary to the older belief. Pathological or acquired retroverted uterus can be mobile or fixed. Causes of a mobile retroverted uterus are a heavy puerperal uterus which falls back or fibroids and adenomyosis. Causes of a fixed retroverted uterus are adhesions, 
between the uterus and pouch of Douglas due to pelvic inflammatory disease, pelvic endometriosis, and genital malignancy with infiltration. Fixed retroverted uterus predisposes to symptoms. In modern gynecology, mobile asymptomatic retroverted retroflex uterus is never treated. However, if during a diagnostic laparoscopy or laparotomy, it is found to be retroverted and retroflexed, some surgeons will do a ventral suspension operation to bring it forward. In the past, when every retroverted uterus was considered a pathological condition, many different treatments, surgical or otherwise, were offered to the patient. Non-operative treatments comprised manual correction or use of a Hodge or Hodgesmith's pessary, whereas surgical treatments involved various techniques like Gilliam's operation, modified Gilliam's operation, Baldi Webster's operation, Alexander Adams operation, and ventrifixation fixation or utropexy. These techniques are of historical interest only. In modern gynecology, the only technique that is done is laparoscopic placation of the round ligaments. If we do not correct retroverted uterus in modern gynecology, then what is the point of learning this topic? I will tell you. Despite this, the applied anatomy of a retroverted and retroflex uterus is still very important in obstetrics and gynecology, as I will tell you now. As I have discussed in details in my chapter on pelvic organ prolapse in the textbook Modern Gynecology, perhaps the most important applied anatomy of flexion and virgin is its important role in prevention of pelvic organ prolapse. As I have mentioned earlier, the normal position is antiflexion of 120 degrees and antiversion of 90 degrees. In this position, if a force were to be exerted from above on the superior surface of the body of the uterus, there would be a retrograde pull on the cervix upwards and backwards, as shown by the curved arrow, thus shutting off the potential vaginal cavity and preventing uterine prolapse. On the other hand, in the mid-post or retroverted positions of the cervix, which is aligned with the vagina, any increase in the intra-abdominal pressure will cause descent of the cervix and uterus into the vagina, thus leading to pelvic organ prolapse. An important take-home message of this topic is that a retroverted uterus is the starting point of pelvic organ prolapse, but it is not the cause of pelvic organ prolapse. Another applied anatomy is incarceration of retroverted gravid uterus. In very early pregnancy, the uterus is retroverted and retroflex in up to 20% of women. As the uterus enlarges during the first trimester, the fundus normally rises from the hollow of the sacrum to an anterior ventral position, spontaneously correcting any retroversion. In rare cases, however, the fundus becomes wedged below the sacral promontory where it continues to enlarge. Concomitantly, the cervix becomes displaced cephalar against or above the symphysis pubis and pushes against the urethra and bladder, which interferes with normal voiding. If a retroverted gravid uterus is not diagnosed and corrected in the first trimester, or if it does not correct itself spontaneously, it would result in inverted polarity in the second trimester after 20 weeks, as shown in this diagram. The saculation originating from the anterior lower segment faces the maternal umbilicus, while the uterine fundus remains in the lower posterior pelvis below the sacral promontory. This is called 
inverted polarity. Concomitantly, both the bladder and the cervix are pulled into the abdominal cavity towards the umbilicus. The cervix can be stretched up to 10 cm in length or more, with the internal os located above the symphysis pubis and occasionally above the bladder. Another applied anatomy of this topic is acutely antiflexed or retroflexed uterus. Acutely antiflexed uterus, also called cochleate uterus, would predispose to perforation of the posterior wall of the body of the uterus during an intrauterine surgical procedure such as medical termination of pregnancy. Similarly, an acutely retroflexed uterus would predispose to perforation of the anterior wall of the body of the uterus. This is the end of my e-lecture on the neglected but important topic of flexion and version of the uterus. If you want to study more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology, please read the following books written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers Clinical Cases in Gynecology Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery A Monogram on Pelvic Organ Prolapse For purchase inquiries, contact me at email given below or ping me at the WhatsApp number mentioned below. Also, please subscribe to my new YouTube channel called Modern OBGYN that deals with basics of obstetrics and gynecology and press the bell icon to get regular notifications about new uploaded videos. Thank you.